joining on time and thank you for participating in one more um, open air provide community call this is always an opportunity for us to share recent developments uh, to share novelties from uh, from uh, open air services those that uh, specifically those that target our our providers uh, repository managers publishers quiz system managers data repository and archi uh, and data archive managers so it's a pleasure to welcome you all and it's a pleasure always to to organize these monthly calls it's also important for us to collect feedback and to receive your 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 feedback so feel free to to share in the chat feel free to 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 ask questions and to and to and to, and to uh, put some questions, even if they are not related with the main topic today. So, uh, I will just share some up, some updates, some informations, and then give the floor to um, to Paulo Mangi, that is in fact currently the Open Air CTO uh, in charge of the technical developments and coordination of uh, Open Air infrastructure. So the main idea, as we promised in previous calls, uh, is to um, give you an overview about the way that open air is contributing to the development of EOSC and the way that in fact you being part of open air contributing with, with content to open air infrastructure uh, can also be part of the, um, the development of the EOSC. Paulo will try to clarify that and you have the opportunity here to to clarify any doubt that you have uh, to ask questions to Paulo as Paulo is really uh, active in the having an important role on the on the um, on the definition of the EOS architecture so i think this is a great opportunity for for you so in the as you know even if you don't if we don't you need to ask him to clarify something related with other components of the provide service you can ask at the end so we have time for that but we we have this main topic of of, of our call today um Notes and agenda uh, are always available. So, uh, my colleague from the University of Virginia will share here the link. But you know that you can ask questions in the chat or even use the 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 minute document to to put questions and to share some and to ask some for some questions. So, um, three three just um, informations. Uh, for you to know uh, that we are preparing um, uh, an interesting development in in the validation process in in, in provide so it's related with um, with the fair assessment you will have an opportunity to test uh, your your um, uh, content provider against uh, procedures of fair assessment we will have it soon we want to present it to you in the coming call in june so i hope that we can do it and um, if we are not able to do it entirely sharing and testing in directly in the tool in the validator tool for sure we can present what we are preparing so be aware of that in the first wednesday of june we can present you the developments of the um of this fair uh, assessment tool that we are uh, putting available in the in our validator in provide then be be aware i think this this was also an uh, a news item in the in our newsletter uh, that we sent out yesterday about the um, the directory of research information systems uh, that is available and was um, produced uh, and made available via eurocris eurocris um, had a partnership with Open Air, and Open Air have sponsored in Open Air Advanced project um, a project uh, uh, to develop uh, an API to integrate this, this directory in 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 the Open Air um, services. Specifically, what we are preparing is that um, the registration of CRIS systems uh will use the the directory uh developed by eurocris this the, the, this this directory uh so we we can also present in upcoming calls the development so be aware of that so soon in provide dashboard uh, for the registration component you will have a part to register uh, CRIS systems 
um, and you must be registered in this directory that will be the authoritative directory for the registration in, in OpenAir and then you can register in, the, in, the, in OpenAir. Uh, a reminder, be aware, and uh, I think we have already presented in, in previous calls and the details of, 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 of this component about the metadata enrichment. Be aware that uh, now to receive uh, the, the full list of events, metadata enrichments that we have available for you, you need to subscribe uh, for, for the topics. Be aware of that. Okay, you can check the information in the, in the enrichment part but um, but in order for you to to receive uh, a full list of, of of metadata events you need to subscribe so we only present a sample of of 100 events so um we already detail and, and demonstrate that in a previous call uh, two or three calls uh, um go so you can you please be aware of that don't forget to to subscribe we are sending uh, in fact in um without any delays these um, subscriptions for you so be aware of that and so uh, i I'm, I'm talking about uh previous calls so all our recordings so we have different demos uh all our recordings are available in, in uh, the, the the community calls web page so different uh, different uh, presentations different demos even um, some calls where we presented some recent developments integrating uh, um, the the broker api in this space crease for example that we had to two calls ago so you you can see the, those recordings i think it's always important to for you to to if you are not able to join the call to to know that we record these calls so these are the, um, the recent um, novelties or the reminders that i want to share with you hope they were useful if you have any questions i'm checking the chat there are no questions so i give the floor, floor to paulo mangi to to present to you the way that open air is being part of the of the yoast developments how we have contributed to to the definition of the architecture of YOSC. Uh, Paulo is, is quite active on that part. So, Paulo, uh, I know I can see that you already can share the screen. So, the floor is yours, and I hope this will be benefit. So, uh, I know that Paulo is happy to reply to your questions. If you want to use the audio, you can do it. If you want to put the chat, feel free. Okay. So thank you very much, Paul, for joining and for contributing. Um, so, uh, yeah. so we'll please feel free to uh, ask questions. Maybe you can write them in the chat, and if Pedro uh, finds one uh, that requires immediate answer, answering, then uh, you can interrupt me. So, because I won't be able to read, of course, while I'm presenting. So, um, so I would like to start from a general overview of what we are providing today because that will clarify the picture that I will get into later on. But uh, the idea is uh, that today we are offering uh, a catalog outside that shows the services that you see here and organized according to three main uh, silos. The publishing, the monitoring and the discovery. And uh, underlining all this, we have a service that is the Open Air Resource Graph, uh, which is powered by the Open Air Provide that you, I think you're all familiar with, and uh, offers its content to third parties through the develop that is at the bottom, as you can see. So the Open Air Develop is basically the set of APIs that we offer together with the dumps, the data dumps to third party to access our services, while the Provide is a sort of gateway uh, for the content providers to, on the one hand, verify their compliance to the guidelines as they have themselves defined as a community uh, of open air, so that their content can be collected and made part of the graph. And as you all know, we are offering this graph, the content, uh, through different portals that you can see here on top. Right? So the monitor and the discover, especially, uh, as you can see from the, from the drawings, are counting on the graph uh, to uh, deliver. Uh, its content to different stakeholders. 
So we have the monitoring aspects, the statistics that can be built out of the graph. We also have the discovery aspect, which we are uh, customizing with respect to uh, specific communities, research communities, and we are now starting to uh, customize with respect to uh, a geographical point of view, so regions, geographical regions. Um, all this is done thanks to the fact that we enriched the graph uh, via several tools, which I'm not going to describe today, but that characterize its objects uh, based on the uh, research flavor they have and uh, the geographical position, let's say, uh, of the affiliation or the, the underlying, the, the, the underlying uh, uh, organizations uh, behind the research product, for example. Okay. So uh, the services on the left that publish are different ways to, uh, that people can, uh, different services that offer different ways to publish their content through the known uh, workflows that we all know about. So Argos Amnesias, you know, the B sciences, if you want to know more, ask, but they're not part of today's discussion, particularly. So starting from this, which is quite important, I think as a starting point, we can go deeper uh, into our relationship with the USC. So as you can see, keep in mind, well, uh, whatever I'm going to present afterwards, that we are trying to match, uh, complete, fill the gap, compensate the uh, services, digital services that are needed to support the research life cycle in general. Okay, so that's very important. And we do this by tracking, uh, collecting information, uh, and also by collecting this information. Now, uh, open air and the USC. So open air was there before the ISC. That's uh, something that we would like to uh, highlight every time we present it. And the, the idea behind this statement, uh, which seems obvious, uh, is uh, to stress the fact that we were somehow doing already a lot of the work that the ISC is willing to do uh, in our context and other contexts as well. Um, so we have engaged as open air with hundreds uh, of different uh, stakeholders in the um, uh, EOS domain, what we call today the EOS domain, is the scholarly communication in Europe. So here you find some of the labels, some of the names and the brands, uh, only some of those with which we actually sat down at the table, right? So each label here required one, two, three, four meetings trying to understand, align, uh, find agreements, establish future directions, and so on on how to deliver uh, content, how to expose content, how uh, to make sure things are somehow interoperable, right? And not just to facilitate open air, because open air here is playing as a facilitator, but to facilitate the whole scholarly communication domain. So we first, first, first notice is uh, interoperability. We have been working towards interoperability for a long time. Uh, the guidelines are a clear example, but there are several other things we're working on. For example, the data source profiles, score leaks, uh, behavior practices. On the right hand, you see the, the communities, the research communities. These are the research infrastructures we have, we are doing business with. Okay, so, and here again, we are trying to focus on the practices. So try to understand what is open science in their domain? What is the subject of publishing in their domain? What is reproducibility? Trying to track whatever they publish and make it uh, part of the graph in a wider context where several communities are, are regarded, right? So we need to somehow uh, uniform this naming, the naming, the behavior, the profiles. Um, so we've been there for a long time trying to do this. Then we started working in the US Secretariat and in Enhance, which are shown at the bottom now. And we continued some of these activities. In the EOSC in hands, uh, especially, we are pushing for the guidelines. We are trying to uh, uh, have the guidelines as a starting point for describing research products in the EOSC. Of course, as a starting point, because the EOSC is uh, yet again uh, a, a community broader than the one we have, from which we should uh, collect information, change the way we describe and behave, and so on. But starting from these great results that the guidelines are, also thanks to you uh, for providing this content. At the same time, we are trying, as we found out, that this is, this is an issue. We are trying to uh, identify common ways to describe data sources across domains, across disciplines, and across types of data sources. Right? As you can see, and you can also witness today through the portal that we have, we've grown up 
the classification of data sources in open air that is confusing, right? So we need something that is simpler and most importantly, accepted by the community. And here again, the EOS plays an important role because uh, whatever we try to do as open air, as a community, trying to involve uh, all possible communities, CORE is one example, um, with the EOS, we are reaching out to uh, more, yeah, more stakeholders. So the endorsement is going to be even stronger. So as open air, since we are trained to do so, we now learn how to build things together as a community and endorse them, get engaged with others. We are trying to transfer this knowledge. And the EOS Secretariat gave us an opportunity to do this via the working groups, where we could participate with the fair definition, the architectural definition, the PID, uh, PID infrastructure and so on. So many from open air on the technical side, but also from uh, other perspectives, of course, the networking and the policies uh, were part of this uh, very interesting, I think, design uh, process that took over. And today we are into ES Future. So ES Future is inheriting all the results, so all the outcomes. Uh, of EOS Finance, EOS Secretariat, and of course, before that, uh, Open Air, and are trying to continue this work of uh, consolidation definition uh, around the interoperability frameworks that are to be used in the EOS, and uh, trying to define a set of core services, digital services, that can actually enact the EOS, so give life to the EOS. So the EOS is not just a, a number of uh, a spiritually related organizations. It's also a number of digital services, a number of processes that regulate such services and a way to stimulate uh, cross-discipline uh, interoperability. So for that, this picture tries to clarify a little um, what's going on. Um, the EOS core, so the, the picture actually, to be clear, represents the digital services. Okay, so anything that is a service digitally provided by organizations in Europe and in some cases beyond, because the EOS must count, of course, on services that are not necessarily in Europe, okay, uh, mainly PID authorities, okay, they must be part of the EOS. So the EOS core is intended as the minimal set of services required to. Uh, make the EOS exist. Uh, typically, in a service-oriented architecture, this is the, the registry. So it's something that keeps track of a map of entities or resources, which we supposedly uh, identified as those uh, creating the EOS, generating the EOS. So the EOS core is, an, is a number of such services, for example, AAI, and together with policies, together with practices, because all services should try to comply to it. Um, uh, the uh, catalogs that we are defining, so the catalogs are examples of the service, EOS service catalog, of which you've uh, certainly heard about, but during the studies, we identified the need also for a research product catalog, which luckily was provided by OpenAir, uh, which is the graph, uh, which is nothing but a, trying to deliver what you guys are storing on your side and providing to the world, okay? So the EOS core is what is essential. Uh, the rest, the EOS exchange, are, um, is the set of services that are complying to the minimal participation rules, rules of participation of the EOS. Um, we'll come to that in a second. So any service that it lives uh, wherever under a, an organization umbrella in Europe that registers, so provides a profile for the service in the EOSC is part, implicitly part of the exchange. So it can be found by consumers and it can be contacted via the EOSC. Then we have the EOSC Federation, which is the rest. What is out there? It's part of research infrastructures and infrastructure is not yet registered to the EOSC. And then we have the research and innovation community. So every, anything, everything, the world, the rest, okay? Now, to be clear, um, the rules of participation of the EOSC are very flexible. The simple principle is that the registration, participation to the EOSC should have a zero cost, almost zero cost, so the registration of the service to a profile. On the other hand, uh, several levels of engagement are provided to the EOSC. So the more you engage, the more you get back in functionalities. So uh, facing the cost of a deep 
deeper integration is up to the service provider based on the opportunities that these uh, will get out of it. Okay. Examples are the monitoring, uh, the uh, accounting services, which are basically services provided by the core to collect the user statistics, uh, to collect, uh, to make sure the service exists, for example. Um, deeper description of the services, which, for example, allow its discoverability uh, through the uh, registry and its reuse. Okay, so these are the things that we're trying to do. Uh, and again, not as mandatory, but based on opportunities. So. The idea of the YOSC uh, Future project is to deliver services that should be appealing, should make a difference, should go beyond what today the research infrastructures can do. Okay, so across all the services, of course, we have the publications, the data, the software, the, uh, that are the products and the outcomes, the input and the, out and the output uh, of the services and of science in general. And this can be found anywhere in the EOS crisis, so the EOS core level, exchange, federation, and community. And of course, when a service is part of the exchange, we expect that if it's a data source, uh, its content to be available to uh, the EOS core uh, catalogs. So here we are trying, therefore, to draft uh, what, is, what it means for a data source like a repository, an institutional repository, or a data repository to be part of the exchange. It can mean several things, and we need to, to design, define these things. The MV is a very uh, high-level concept, but it's the idea, the minimum viable use case, the, is the idea of saying, in, in any moment in time, you can define the set of services that makes, make the use uh, essential, necessary, okay? And this set of services can broaden up beyond the use core. Some of the services out there will become essential slowly to the point that you have to ask yourself, should this be part of the core at some point? This is very typical in the process of end users, right? Uh, when Google uh, uh, started, uh, some of the features that came out were just fancy new features that are now things that we cannot do without, right? So, and they became part of the essential before they were fancy. <laughs> uh, uh, capabilities and today is something we cannot live without. And a very similar principle will apply here, I believe. So when we look at open air, uh, where is open air uh, plugging into the use? Well, we have four services that are core. So four services will be part of the core, which is a, a very important result and also responsibility in a way. The rest of the services are all registered and part of the exchange. So any, every service that we have is part of the exchange. As you can see, uh, the research graph is part of the core. The open air user statistics, which is part of the uh, uh, monitoring and the counting in a way. So we are trying to measure uh, the statistics related with the uh, publications, data and software. So the research products and the overall of the data sources that are stored in them. Okay. Then we have uh, the Open Science Observatory, uh, which will offer statistics indicators, fairness, openness, etc., with respect to the combinations of all publications, data, and software. Okay, and that's very important. And finally, we have provide. I think this is probably uh, one of the most interesting thing, and it's actually one that uh, um, is very close to you and to your interest. So this picture maybe shows it better, but the idea is that if you want to register a service to the EOS, you uh, are going today to the EOS service catalog, which is there. Uh, it's something that you can reach uh, from the EOS portal, you can register a profile and so on. Uh, but as an open air, we'll do something more. So we'll make sure that uh, when a service like a data source is registered to open air is uh, somehow compliant to the use so we'll make sure that the profile of this repository institutional repository or data repository will be fed to the uh, eos this means that our uh, modeling of services of data sources uh, will match the one of the use and we'll make sure that whatever the data source does as an effort to be compliant to the guidelines uh, that we are going to expose uh, will be revealed also to the EOSC. So we are willing basically to use provide as a way to uh, verify 
the, the quality, the uh, compliance level of the data source and the underlying research products to what the EOSC will define as guidelines for those, which, as I mentioned before, uh, will start from the uh, open air guidelines. So this is a good, I think, <laughs> result. But this may change depending on uh, the requirements uh, set by the communities to which, by the way, uh, you are part of, of which you are part of. Okay. So the idea is that a data source that is compliant to the open air guidelines is de facto compliant, its research products are de facto compliant to uh, the EOSC guidelines. This will be the starting point. And we will evolve from there uh, as we are doing today already for uh, our guidelines. Okay. So changes may take place. Uh, it's just that this decision making will be taken uh, in wider groups uh, where the whole community is again invited to participate, where open air will play the facilitator role, of course. Uh, as a result of this, um, the, all the resource products will be visible and made visible to the EOSC through the graph. This means that the open air, uh, the EOSC graph, the, uh, the EOSC portal, will uh, offer search facilities, discovery facilities, browsing, statistics, everything based on the open air resource graph APIs. Okay, so they will connect to the API of the graph to provide something that is similar to uh, what we are providing as Explore, uh, similar to what we're providing maybe for the communities, but tailored to the interest of the EOS portal users. So they will match their own perspective. Uh, this means again that we as uh, Open air resource graph providers may need to enrich this information further. Uh, we'll need to customize some of the subject fields or whatever that is needed and driven by uh, extra requirements that will come from the uh, from the EOSC, from the broader community. Uh, as a first result, which is we which I think is very interesting, the open air resource graph will include services, the EOSC services, uh, of which the data sources are a subset. So from the explore, for example, uh, you'll be able to appreciate searches that, that find services in the use, okay, in general, and uh, the relationships of those services with the products or the services with the organizations. We'll do a lot of uh, very interesting stuff, right, on mining, by mining the graph, finding new relationships, etc. And new, new statistics, new indicators may arise from this. Uh, very similar uh, is the Open Science Observatory integration, which we uh, believe is going to be uh, one of the essential uh, services there, and the Open Air User Statistics. Now, the Open Air User Statistics is again a quite important service because uh, in the context of the EOS future, we are willing to broaden its adoption, uh, its scope, let's say, of usage to data repositories. So if today the usage counts, basically, uh, focuses on the on institutional repositories, tomorrow we'll make a distinction. Again, this is not clear because many of the repositories are already hybrid, so they provide data sets. And maybe many of the events that we are uh, delivered are already relative to data sets. So we'll probably have something that uh, Will, uh, will look like an overlay on top of it, making sure that we have more sources providing the events to us. And uh, that's interesting because we are planning to make the statistics, the downloads, the views um, as part of the elements in the graph to enable searches, discovery that is based also on that, right? No, we have to think about it, but there's plenty of uh, ideas. So we may have surrogates, we, have, we, have, we may have indicators or the effective download and use, it's up to us to decide. Now, uh, this is the last slide. Uh, and this shows in EOSC future, uh, the current status of the architecture as we are willing to provide it. Okay. In EOSC future, we are not creating something new, but we are gluing the results of open air, the results of the EOS Cloud, the results of the EOS Enhance, to provide the version one of the EOS core that I mentioned before. So going back is this guy here in the center, the bluish, okay? Uh, the first version. So trying to match the requirements identified by the EOS architectural working group. So as you can see, the portal, uh, 
here is split in two parts. Is one part of which will offer uh, some functionalities for the consumers and some for the providers. Uh, consumers of EOSC resources, providers of EOSC resources. So a provider is an entity delivering a service, delivering a resource product to the EOSC. A consumer is an entity who's willing to consume it, so to find, access it, reuse it where possible. Um, the two views, the two way, ways to access uh, resources are characterized, of course, by different functions. So as a provider, I'm interested in, in a help desk because I want to understand what I have to do. And I'm interested in anything that is a resource management functionality. So uh, onboarding, profiling, editing, and monitoring, so see, checking the results of my service, how many uh, events uh, regard my service in different sources, let's say different uh, kinds of uh, garnishing. As a consumer instead, uh, I have a different perspective. So yes, I still need a help desk, but then I want to search, I want to find, I want to access, I want to be able to compose resources, right? So compose them, take one resource and do something with another resource. And in a transparent way at the higher level. And uh, uh, as a separate note, I would like to uh, access statistics about science in general. Um, of course, as part of the consumer portal, we will have the training catalog, we will have the open science help desk and so on. So here we're just focusing on uh, the subset of services of work package four and five in your future. So the strictly technical uh, challenges. So more informative aspects are dealt with in another packages. Sorry, I opened the closed the parenthesis, but that's to be clear. Um, now, if you take a look at the center uh, of this picture, you have uh, the services with the logos that are the ones that we provide, the services without that are the ones provided by the use Um The service registry is the one that I mentioned before, and it's a, a registry of services. This is an aggregator, not only a place where you can uh, manually include the metadata of your service, but it's also an aggregator of catalogs, like the open air ones, with which we have SLAs, uh, catalogs that are dealing with profiles, service profiles at the research infrastructure level that expose the profiles according to the EOSC language for service profiles, which is called service description template defined by the EOSC uh, Enhance uh, project. And uh, therefore the, serv the service uh, plays this important role of having one map of the existing services uh, in Europe, around 700, if I remember well. The dashboards and the monitoring accounting are somehow linked to the service registry because the dashboards are um, the, all the views that, or they say the UIs that are needed to access the monitoring, the accounting statistics relative to services. Okay. Uh, some of the services are providing the statistics already to the, to the core, uh, and these are uh, limited to the marketplace, the service registry itself, the portal itself. In, during EOS Future, we'll start a campaign trying to, to offer these services to uh, uh, services in the exchange. As open air, we are willing to participate. So we are already collecting KPIs, monitoring our stuff, and we will certainly integrate with the monitoring and accounting of the EOSC uh, to offer our data, to make it visible transparently to the world, to show off how good our services are doing. Uh, the marketplace is another interesting product. I think it's, uh, as we see it today, uh, it's probably very basic, but I think it will in the future play a major role. So the marketplace uh, allows consumers to find a service and to find the instruction on how to use it. Not only, it offers a tool that is called a uh, bundle. So a bundle is, um, you can see it as a group of services that are together because together they can offer a, a cool functionality. And you as a user can buy a bundle. When you buy a bundle, it means that you need this topology of services, so this combination of services, according to your specific needs. So services may be computing and a special, a special service deployed on this computing and maybe some input data, okay? And you may establish also the 
amount of uh, computing that you want or which kind of entities you would like to have as input data and so on, that's for the future. And uh, when you buy the bundle, all the service providers involved with the bundle are contacted. And together with the consumers, they can establish a solution. Uh, in some cases, this solution can be delivered on demand. And that's the interesting part. That's the, the that we call it the composability of the uh, resources we use. And as open air, we are doing some interesting uh, experimentations here, which regard the data repositories, the institutional repositories, and so on, uh, which are based on the simple idea that uh, if we establish common methods to uh, deposit objects uh, into repositories, sort like, I'm sure many of you are familiar with this. Uh, framework, and if we register our uh, data sources to the EOSC, specifying what is necessary to deposit according to these protocols, um, then we may have scenarios where consumers can find these services uh, through the EOSC and uh, have depositing workflows that are based on discovery. So, essentially, uh, by offering to the users the, the possibility to pick a service of where to deposit by uh, third-party uh, applications. And this is one of the things we are working on in OpenM Nexus. Uh, not going into the detail of this, but you're all welcome to participate. So the marketplace has a great potential, I think, uh, that goes beyond. And of course, it works on the service registry, where it fishes the material from. Uh, and in the future, it will also fish from the OpenM Research Graph, as you can see, you can tell by the arrow there. Uh, finally, there's a special task on AI, so artificial intelligence for discovery. That was part of the call. So in years future, we were uh, uh, asked, requested to address this specific uh, task. And the idea is to uh, not only to inspect the graph, uh, thanks to deep learning techniques to improve discovery, but also to collect uh, information about AI uh, from the original sources. This, mean that, this means that uh, we may have uh, something that is similar to usage counts in a way. So uh, trying to collect actions that are related to behavior of users or understanding of users from the original repositories when this is possible. And to collect this information to try to exploit it uh, centrally uh, from the EOS portal perspective. Uh, when I use we, uh, I don't mean that open air is always necessarily involved in these activities, of, although we are quite pervasive uh, in these two work packages, um, because the graph puts us in a central position as we will acquire several uh, data from different services. Um, the help desk, it's offered in two fashions. EOS Core, so a help desk that is dedicated to explain what EOS Core services are, how to use them and so on. Uh, questions, uh, FAQs, uh, any all sort of things for both consumers and providers. But then there's also an option to provide a help desk as a service. That is for um, service providers who are not offering today a help desk, and they can do it through the EOSC. Okay, so you can uh, make a request, get your help desk, and start interacting with your users, your providers through a uh, structured mechanism. That's the idea. Um, um, finally, an interesting development, I think. Uh, apologies, somebody's cleaning the house. Um, is that we are moving uh, the open air guidelines, as I mentioned before, as a network um, in a quite central position with respect to the overall EOSC interoperability framework. So the EOSC IF, so called is a place where the communities can discuss, debate, agree on existing standards uh, or defining new ones if they're not in matching their expectations, but describing them in a, uni in a uniform manner. This means that protocols will be provided with a persistent identifier, relative metadata description, and so on. Um, so the guidelines would be one of those, would be adopted by the EOS core, so as identified for the description of resource products. And this will, as I mentioned before, open a gateway uh, through the EOS via open air. Okay. 
And the guidelines, if you think about it, are a way to uniform behavior in scholarly communication in general. So we're trying to describe our objects in a common way. That's very FDO-like, is very interoperability framework-like. The problem is that when we're doing this, um, in several circumstances, this may uh, require an effort from the community to buy, to buy in what we're proposing. Uh, for institutional repositories, it's been very straightforward. This is something they were used to because their uh, level of integration in scholarly communication is at the scholarly communication level, not at the specific discipline level. For data repositories, it's a different story because they often target metadata formats, models that satisfy their specific users, their communities. When they need to adhere to the open air guidelines, they have to spend money, resources, invest on this to expose their data to data side, to the open air guidelines, and so on. Because in many cases, they're not data side compliant. Okay. Um, this reveals a gap, right? It's not something that we haven't envisaged at all, but it is the fact that we're missing really a part that the USC somehow uh, uh, reminds us of. Okay, so the idea is to move towards uh, research communities by broadening our uh, open air guidelines and basically saying that for some communities which are mature, for example, whose data sources are already exposing uh, uniformly, so they made this, this effort, their metadata through specific protocols, to somehow include them as uh, uh, endorse their metadata format as open air guidelines. As EOS guidelines. An example is the uh, Elixir guidelines for bioschemas. Okay, so we're, that's what we are doing now as an experiment. The idea is to make sure that open air goes towards the data sources rather than vice versa, in a good balance, of course, and a trade off uh, of effort, because we cannot do it at the specific proprietary format level. We need a community to offer a common. Uh, understanding uh, of what research products are, like the Elixir in this case. So in this case, we are including a new set of guidelines, which I very like, very much like, which is uh, research community specific. Similar actions can be done uh, in other contexts. This means that OpenAI takes on board the effort of mapping local guidelines, which are uniform across several sources, and map them into the OpenAI graph. Okay. Uh, that's a I think something that we started with the USC, right? And I like that because the USC gave us the opportunity to think more about these chances. And that's where we're moving next, okay? Uh, this work is being today uh, performed in the context of USC Enhance. And uh, I'm done. So if you want to ask me any questions, I'd be pleased to answer. It's a lot of stuff, I know. <laughs> so, yeah, many things, Paul. There are already some some questions in the chat. There is one that is not uh, so. As as John said, uh, it is not fully relevant for this forum, but we can also clarify the role of uh, um, where the the Open Research Europe platform fit into the the EOSC, the, the EOSC ecosystem. So it's uh, okay. Well, the uh, platform is a data source. So it's one of the services that will be registered to the EOSC exchange, as we call it. And uh, we are working towards making it compatible to the Open Air guidelines. And so they are trying to expose their metadata according to the guidelines. And uh, it will be, it, it will happen this year. So this is their first basic action to do. Uh, we are, have, have uh, sat down with them already a couple of times. In fact, yeah, thank you. Yeah, there are my more three other questions. You can you can read it. Is yeah, version yeah, four of okay? It's version four of the literature repository guidance live. Uh, that's for you, Pedro. Mm -hmm. But you can read the others. Is version four of the literature repository guidance right now? Yes. Liliana has two good questions. The first one, uh, the answer is yes. This is when the two services will be fully aligned and integrated. So this will take some time on the roadmap of your speaker, but we are already working on it. 
So this means that OpenAI will change the internal representation of data sources to match the one that is being defined for the use, which uh, I, together with others, are defining, uh, with Mark uh, Van der Sanden from uh, UDAT are defining, uh, with the endorsement of Refree Data, uh, fair sharing, which are taking uh, a look on what we have and giving us feedback, because they will themselves expose data according to these common profiles. The second question is, the Open Science Observatory is based on open air data, or yes, it is. And what we hope is that we collect further data in the context of the EOS future, uh, which we, for example, the monitoring data about the services, right? So anything that can, we can use to provide new uh, interesting fancy indicator for open science. Just to reply to Jan, thank you very much for your question about the literature, two, the version four of the, the literature guidelines and specifically the validator. We had a, a period with uh, some issues um, validating the OIP image interfaces uh, and for a short period we put it not in use. I thought that this was already solved. If it is in, I was, I was trying to, to check if it is there, not in use, uh, it should not be there. So um, the, the validator is working. Okay, so sometimes we have some issues with um, when we try to test um, repositories with a high number of, of records, but it's so we don't have um, a common issue, so we are not sure about what is um, what is behind that 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 problem that we are having because usually we don't have it, but we 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 have, we receive we we some of of, of our users report it some issues that we, we are trying to solve. But uh, so, Jan, uh, the validator is working for the literature guidelines. I'm, I'm also checking here with, with Andreas. So we thought that not in use was already not there, <laughs> but but maybe it is. So thank you for providing that and we will solve it. Yeah, thank you. So, and then this question was also important for Alexander and Bianchi. <laughs> So Alexandra Bianchi, sorry for that. So be aware that the, the validator is working well, so you can use it. Okay. So feel free to, to turn on your microphone if you want to share any thoughts or ask questions. So you don't need to sometimes it's more difficult to write it, but so Julia, Julia is also asking something here. Hello, thanks for your talks. Do you think that the research assessment based on open science will use a specific provider from the task or the old system? <laughs> okay. This is a more difficult question, but, um, uh, um, but this is one more contribution. We can say that um, for sure, I'm our, sure our systems and the, and the repositories are a contribution for the Yes. So, take into account that several units, several DGs are already uh, taking our data in consideration, so your data in consideration for the, uh, for the evaluation. Okay. So, they're, they're pushing a lot to use open data rather than going to the Scopus, to the Web of Science, etc. So, and we are trying to clean it up as much as possible because that uh, is the issue, right? So, uh, we already have several rounds of conversations uh, with them. So if by research assessment you mean the one of the commission, yes, this is already uh, taking place and using EOSC resources because the open air uh, catalog is uh, is an EOSC resource. Yeah, for that component of the European Commission, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that the research assessment is more broader than just that. So also for institutions, uh, but this is a this yeah. is a journey. So open science is a journey and for sure the tools that we, we have, uh, we need to prove their value and um, their, value, their role also uh, for the, the new ways of, of, of assess and contribution for new metrics. Yeah, but they are for sure contributions for this journey, open science journey, let's say. I hope that we can, we were able to reply to your question. So feel free to ask questions if you want. So many thanks for Paulo. I think it was quite important to have this, um, this overview. Uh, we can, uh, we can finish. Uh, if you want to ask any other thing, you can, uh, 
can do it in the coming meeting. We have one one more minute, and then Paulo need to run to another to another um, yeah, presentation. So, and anyway, I'm I'm of course more than available via email. So uh, if you want to know more, just feel free to write me. Yeah. But we can we can we can close. We are coming to a end, so I have only two slides, and then I can present it. And if we have any question, you can ask, and then we close. So, uh, upcoming calls. We have two calls uh, scheduled for June and July. Um, for sure, we'll do it in June. Then we will going to decide if we can do it in July or not. Maybe not, but in June, but they are scheduled. But for sure, we'll have it in the second of June, uh, the first Wednesday of the month. Uh, notes and recordings will be uh, made available. Um, uh, subscribe the newsletter or disseminate it in your institution or in your in your countries for those that uh, you think that they can benefit from receiving information about um, the provide the open air provide the services, functionalities, features, etc. So we are sending um, every. Uh, month, uh, the newsletter in the first week, usually on Monday or on Tuesday before our calls on Wednesday. So we always send out this this newsletter. Uh, be aware of that. So subscribe if you didn't subscribe yet or disseminate it. And um, and many thanks for your for your participation. So all the links uh, my colleague Andre shared here. Uh, so many thanks for your contribution uh, and Paulo. Many thanks for uh, for being here with us um, and contributing to this to this call. Uh, so see you in one month. Uh, we have uh, some novelties for you to present the fair enabling um, uh, assessment, uh, the fair assessment that we want to integrate in our validator. Um, some other some other functionalities for sure will be made available. For sure, the finally the multi-user access will be made available in May. This is the promise that I have <laughs> for you. We have already promised to April, um, but but for sure we'll have it, which is important. Uh, so for you to to have more than one uh, manager of your data source assessing the provide dashboard. So it's all, uh, and thank you for joining this call. And um, so um, see you in one month. And um, so you can check the recordings and the slides are, are available. Many thanks.